All right, well, hello and welcome to this week's Rams Revealed. I'm your host, J.B. Long, and excited about our guest, a 28-year-old defensive lineman who has been with the Rams since 2020. Can't wait yeah. to hear more about uh, his story, his incredible journey to Los Angeles and to the NFL. Jonah Williams making his first appearance. How are you? Yeah, good. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for stopping by at 1-1. One and one. Let's start with your reaction to a Week 2 defeat against San Francisco. It feels like there was a lot of optimism uh, coming out of that locker room. No one wants a moral victory, but if there was one to be had, was it yesterday? Yeah, I mean, the outcome wasn't what we wanted, but um, I feel like defense, we, I mean, we did put together a good game, and uh, we watched our game plan come to life yesterday. Um, I felt really good about the game. The, the score didn't, you know, didn't show it, but... Tell us about your role within that game plan. It sure looked like you were locking horns with Trent Williams, one of the best in the game. Yeah, I knew it would be a huge, uh, huge challenge. I have a lot of respect for his game. Um, but I feel like our coaches, they did a really good job this week just putting us in good positions to um, to attack you know, their run game, what, you know, what they had planned. So, How unique is that roster, their offensive personnel, their scheme, the way they come at you? It's a... Uh, it's a good offense. I think what they do best in the league is just all the, the misdirection. I mean, they're always, I mean, when they, when they line up, they do so many things out of so many different formations. It might be the same run, but you might get, you know, 30 different looks at it because of the formations that they're in. So um, they do a good job at, at mixing it up and um, got to give it credit to them. Talked to Eric Henderson a little bit this morning. He thought you were awesome. Uh, you graded out well, maybe even better than pro football focus might have had. How do you feel about your performance individually within that game plan? Uh, I, I felt good. I just, like I said, the coaches put us in, um, I think, good positions. Uh, I think the game plan was really good. Um, went out there and did what I feel like they expected me to do uh, with, with certain runs. Um, did have things that, uh, I mean, it's every – Every single game, there's always these things that I just wish were better. Um, should have been stronger on that first touchdown of the game. Um, that goes to sh show Trent he is, uh, you know, he's a little crafty. He used his little hand chop, you know, put me in a bad position. But um, I, th I think it was, you know, a good game. Score just didn't show it. Yeah. Home opener for the Rams. I heard you had some family there as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I had a lot of, a lot of family, in-laws, my parents, brother. Um, a lot of people there. So, I, you know, my favorite is being able to see my son, you know, just stand up there against the, the glass. He's a year and a half now. So he's, he's starting to see the world a little bit better. And I don't know, it's fun watching him. His name is? Walker. Awesome. That's, yeah, that's Walker great. Walker Williams. That would be a good football name. So it's a great one. <laughs> <laughs> well named. Yeah. Um, how has this year been different so far than last year's kind of unprecedented circumstances? Like a lot of us, have observed a different vibe, a different disposition. How would you characterize that so far in 23? Uh, for, for me personally, I just feel, I, I talk on about the defense. Um, we just, we just, we trust each other a lot. I think we're really just close. Um, uh, I think more so than years past. Like, I don't know, I just feel a camaraderie, a, a tightness, a closeness, a trust. Um, as a defense when we're out there. I think when you come in early on in the league, you feel a little more just by yourself. Like you're out there just trying to, you know, earn the respect of your teammates and you're not even really talking to each other that much because you're just trying to like wrap your head around this whole game, you know, the, the defense and the system and everything. But now it just feels to me a lot better just to be so close with all my teammates and we just go out there and have, you know, just this trust and have a lot of fun playing together. So part of it is the group that's here. Part of it is yeah. your role within that group and how you've matured yeah. as a professional too and, and settled into your responsibilities. One thing that hasn't changed the ethos of dog work and every time someone in your position group comes into these chairs, I wanna know yeah. what that means to them and, and how they explain it to those who could never understand what it's like on the inside. Well, I'm super fortunate to have Aaron Donald who's you know the best, hands down, just the best display of that dog work mentality. Mm -hmm. And I have to give him a lot of credit for just so setting that example of what it means to to live that life. I mean, look at a guy who who does all the things that the team asks him to do with the lift and the, the meetings or whatever, and then you see 
the second you know the second level where he comes in after practice and does extra work or does extra things during the during the lift or you know the stories of what you know what he's doing at the at the house more stuff so just having that example of like the work is never enough like there's just always more to do and um it's been fortunate to have a great example show me show me how to do that i love seeing someone like him side by side with someone like you and the different paths that you took to the same position group let's go back to rocky mountain high school is it meridian idaho yep only one offer coming out of, of high school so let's talk about how we got there you were a tight end until your junior season of high school yeah i I was all over. So I actually lived in Washington until the middle of my sophomore year and I moved to Idaho and I was playing a couple different positions. My body hadn't yet like grown. I mean, I was going into my senior year or during my junior year, I was about six foot, like 190. I was, I was smaller than I am now. And I grew like four or five inches, 50 pounds my senior year. So that's when I started. You know, the coach was like, no, you're going to go play D-line. That was right before my senior season though. So I'd been practicing tight end all summer and they're like no you don't I don't know what it was you know I just wasn't good enough I guess tight end they're like just go put them on d-line which they do with a lot of people that they don't <laughs> want to have in, the, in, the, in, the, in their groups whatever I don't know but they moved me to d-line so that's how I transitioned to it I read a quotation from your defensive line coach I believe his name is Todd Roberts from the, yeah. uh, the Idaho press said no one gave yeah. him anything Jonah earned everything how did you earn it from that point to where you became all state in just over a year's time I just, I think just going through the system through middle school and high school, I was never that guy on the team. Like I was always considered never good enough. And so complacency couldn't ever sit in. Like it just, I was never given anything. So um, finally, when I got that opportunity, uh, I got a little bit my junior year. I still didn't play that much football my junior year. Probably took five, 10 snaps a game. And then um, my senior year, I got a starting role as D end. I think it was just, I knew I was still young at the position. I didn't have a lot of technique, so it was more just have the motor. Hmm. You know, just run and try as hard as you can, and um, it paid off. Too late in the recruiting process, though. Why yeah. only Why only Weber? I understand you had some other walk-on opportunities, but you took the one that was guaranteed? Yeah. yeah took the one that could pay for school. I knew no one else was going to be able to pay for, for school for me. Um, they were the most willing to uh, have me come onto their team, even though I was in a certain mission. I don't know if you knew that or not, but yeah. I was in Brazil for two years, um, serving a mission for the, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So, you know, that's a big risk for a college program to look at a guy, you know he's going to Brazil, he's not going to lift, he's not going <laughs> to, eat well he's probably gonna get sick um so there was some there was some local interest boise state was interested told him i was gonna serve a mission that they lost interest pretty quick utah state was interested same thing they all offered walk-ons after after my mission but no one wanted to take that that chance except weber you were in sao paulo is that correct yeah yeah what'd you take away from that experience what'd you do down there it's a huge building block I guess my my personal development, just being able to leave home, go to another country. Everything's new, everything's uncomfortable. Um, but just to dive into the work there, just to serve. We're basically just there for two years to just help help people. So whether that's moving stuff, that's teaching about God, um, whatever it was. I mean, there's millions of different things that we did, but. Um, just being there and being away from family and just growing up, becoming a man, I think that was a huge stepping stone for me. So I know you're not like lifting, you're not on a physical regimen to get ready for college football during those two years, but as a late bloomer, maybe it served you well to be a little bit older when you do get to Ogden finally and eventually develop into a big sky defensive player of the year. I think you won big uh, three conference titles. Yeah. Along the way, you overlapped with Cooper Cup in that conference, what, one year? (laughs) Do you remember facing him at Eastern? if I remember right, his that first year I was there, he was already out. Or already maybe, gone. Yeah, I don't. I don't remember him, but yeah, probably for the best. He it, was it is good. So we, we beat up. <laughs> yeah, we beat up Eastern Washington after he left. But I know before they were they were dangerous. So, um, yeah. 
and the obstacles that you kind of overcome here just continue because right around the yeah. corner, once you're done with, as a collegiate, um, your pro day gets canceled by the pandemic, yeah. right? And, yeah. and with it, probably the chance to get drafted, even though your measurables seem pretty good yeah. uh, with where you were that spring. Your first off season as a Ram is remote. Uh, I'm just looking on the list of things, waived, released, claimed, failed physical, practice squad. Like you've yeah. been through just about everything 100%. the NFL has to offer someone in yeah. your position. As you look back, what was the hardest obstacle to overcome? Just there's too many of them. I mean, every year I know that first year coming in after after COVID was tough um, because I was expected to basically come in as a new body type, you know, an extra 20 pounds and then play a new position at D-line. Um, I played more five tech, six in college, came in here. I was playing four, three, two. My, my second year in the league, uh, Bobby Brown went down, so then I had to play zero and shade. And so just, I mean, it was tough. I mean, Andrew Andrew Whitworth was who I was going against in camp, made me grow up quick with just all the savvy vet stuff that, that he was doing. So, I mean, just name the year. I mean, there's new challenges every single year. Um, but getting cut that first year and then going on Peace Squad, and playing against our offense every single day was probably the best hmm. develop, development that I've had because you're taking 30 to 40 plays in a Wednesday, Thursday you know, practice. It's like it's a P-Squad's game day during those practices. So I developed a lot and learned a lot from the vets you know, in the O-line uh, beating up on me. So um, for sure, that was the, the biggest challenge coming in. But there's, I mean, there's challenges every year. So... Who's got more position badges when all is said and done? You or your guy, Mike Hoyt? <laughs> what do you mean by that? No, well, he's been just about everywhere on the defensive front now, yeah. and he's a stand-up edge all of a sudden. Yeah, so. yeah I'm, I'm happy for him. I mean, just the fact that we're still here together. I mean, we're, you know, we're both super happy about that. We still do our game day walks outside, you know, just before the game. That we've been doing for, you know, every year we, we've been here. So, um it's good just having him around. I think there's three undrafted guys from our class now, me, Mike, and uh, Christian, I think. Mm -hmm. So we're How's really fulfilling close. How's then to, to have seen it all the way through to a yeah. starting role now with the Rams? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's crazy. Um, just super grateful. I just just keep working and um, things just, just work out. I mean, I feel like when you, especially having like AD as an example, like I'm saying, you know, the work I'm watching him do the work that earned him you know all the success that he's had and it's just trying to mimic that and um total faith that it'll play out you know the same way for me if I keep keep working like that yeah. so it's Bengals week next week three a trip right. to Cincinnati the first regular season game against these Bengals since the Super Bowl yeah I was thinking today like where did you take in that Super Bowl where were you as the Rams <laughs> won a world championship so that was the, that was the year that I had made active roster, and I got cut uh, week eight. I remember sitting sitting in one of the offices, you know, about to get cut. You see Von Miller come in with the camera crew, and knowing that we were going, we were switching roles there, and um, I was on P squad. So um, for the last what was it, seven games or whatever, ten games, um, I was just on P squad and. I was on the sideline for the game, so. Street close, sideline? Yep, yep. So I really, really want to be able to earn that Super Bowl again, you know, be, be in that same position again, but actually contributing, except, you know, just being on the field, not just practicing here, getting guys ready, but you know, actually playing in that game. Yeah, how, how specifically do you feel like you've taken your game to the next level in, in the two years since that championship to be where you are in this rotation? I think it's just trying to trying to find something new to get better at every year. I mean, just always looking back on the previous season, never like satisfied, never like happy with how how it turned out. So attacking that off season, this was my best off season I've had. Um, healthy, just you know, getting getting working with the D line coach this off season, the the nutrition, the, I mean, all that stuff. Just I think puts a you know, puts a better product, you know, in camp when camp rolls around. So, 
Having yet to install the game plan for the week ahead, do you think it's fair to say that week three will ultimately come down to which Jonah Williams has the better performance on Monday Night Football? <laughs> of course. I mean, that's the mindset that I have to have, right? I mean, if I, if I play dominant in my position, then, I mean, that makes everyone else's role in the defense easier. So, yeah. First round draft pick, undrafted, Alabama, Weber State. Yep. But you got the ring. Right. There you go. Yeah. Plans for the off day? Sounds like you got a young family. What do you and your son yeah. like to do when you're away from the facility? We uh, we live behind the golf course, so we'll jump over the jump over the wall there and just go run around the the grass. And he just loves being outside, so I just chase him around all day. It's good. Me and me and my wife and him. So hit a few wedges while you're out there. Or? Yeah, I might take the wedge out. Okay. Yeah, he's got his little set too. So I won't ask which golf course because I don't want the pro shop calling yeah. and saying, "Hey, <laughs> we got we got to get the Williamses off of yeah. uh, hole number yeah, nine. We go, we go at dusk, so you know. A little twilight rate. Yeah. Uh, Jonah, we finish uh, each podcast with a segment we call three and out appropriate given your role on this Rams defense. Uh, we want you to get them all right, but there's no wrong answers. But uh, okay. for participating, I'll make a donation to the LA Rams Foundation on your behalf. Uh, so here we go. Do you think Dame Lillard ever gets jealous about you surpassing him as Weber State's all-time greatest professional athlete? <laughs> I don't think he does. No. <laughs> His number one's retired there in the rafters. I think your 94 has to be next. Yeah, I, I hope so. That'd be cool. Okay, yeah. we'll get to work on that. Uh, proper pronunciation for the city in which you were born in Washington. Puyallup. Which is a, it's a source of contention, right? Like those who live there and know, yeah. they hate to hear it mispronounced, I know, from doing Husky games, right? Yeah, so. Short drive from SeaTac? Kind of South um, Seattle, is that right? Yeah, that's where I was born, but I, I spent most of my life in Stanwood, which is Way up, way up north. Okay. So, yeah, a little country town up there. Did that make you a Seahawks fan yep. coming up? Yeah, my fans or my, my family had a hard time, you know, switching the jerseys over, but they were, wearing, they were wearing Rams jerseys at the game last week. So. I bet they liked week one for sure. Yeah. And then lastly, uh, this one came out of nowhere for me. I got to give credit to my wife. But uh, there's a social media study or trend, I guess, that says men are thinking about the Roman Empire all the time these days. <laughs> When's the last time you thought about ancient Rome? Uh, I thought about it, I think, three days ago when I heard that this was a trend okay, going so, on. Okay, yeah, so, so that's you about got it about the same time I did then. But <laughs> yeah. when she asked, were you like, oh, yeah, I think about it all the time. Or you're like, what is this? I've never thought about ancient Rome. Uh, I, never, I never think about it. Yeah, not no. since like high school. Think about literature. Uh, trying to play better football. Yeah. So Think about uh, bringing down the Cincinnati empire while you're at it. That's right. Yeah. Jonah, good to meet you. Congratulations yeah, on uh, your role with this year's team. Hard Thank earned you. and the young family that you're raising as well. Appreciate Thank you. getting Thanks for having to me. know you a little bit better. For Jonah Williams, I'm JB Long. This is Rams Revealed.